Let us open it in the book of Judges, chapter 11. In the book of Judges, chapter 11, let us read verse 36 to 37, and then we will go to Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Judges chapter 11, verse 36, let us read. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which had proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord had taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Aaron, in 37, and she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may go up and down upon the mountains, and bewail my virginity, and I, I and my fellows. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, until verse 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In number two, and be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let us pray. Oh God, Jesus, your word has been read, and your servant is standing. There's only one thing that I ask, pour out your anointing. Let the spirit that is in me will bring out the word and the message in my mouth according to your will, and pour out blessing to your people today. Revival shall come in the midst of us, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank you for standing with me, church. You may now take your seat. And the title of my places is The Living Sacrifice. Now in the verse that we have read a while ago in the book of Judges, this is the story of a daughter that ended up as a burnt offering because of the foolish ball of her father. So according, according to what is written in the Bible, to what was happened, it was started in verse 29. When her father, Jephthah, Jephthah, in verse 29, we can read uh, Judges chapter 20, 11, verse 29, Sister Marie. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mespah of Gilead, and from Mespi of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. Jephthah, her father, was in a bottle. In verse 29, we can read that the Lord was already there, prepared to give him the victory. Amen. And yet, because of the smoke screen, which always happened to us, Instead of looking forward to the victory that's already there about to pour out on us, we look for another way. And this is what happened to Jephthah. That's why in verse 30, it's, uh, it says here that, And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hand, he challenged the Lord, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. He makes a bargain to God with his not really necessary. That's why as I was 
I said a while ago, the victory is already there. God did not require him to make a bargain to God because the victory was already in his hand. And because of this bow that he had made, as what I have said, the Lord does not demand such bargaining for his favor. Now, what is this vow? A vow were made under a variety of circumstances and usually involve gifts, which is offering dedicated to the Lord in response to his aid, in response to the victory that he will give. Jephthah's vow created a possibility that someone a person in his household would become a human sacrifice and he was not the one who will choose for this. God chose the most precious one in his life. His daughter is his only child. He made a vow and God required the most precious thing. And after one offering, God required the pure and without blemish. Jephthah's daughter is worthy for the burnt offering, meaning she is pure and without blemish in the sight of God. She was chosen. And when Jephthah went home, he won the victory. When he went home in verse 30, let's start in verse 34, Sister Marie. And Jephthah came to Mizpah and to his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him. So the vow, he said, whosoever will come out to meet me will be my burnt offering to you. And when he went home, his daughter came out to meet him with triplers and with, and with dance, and he was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. He came out in victorious attitude. He came out in a uh, declaring victory with joy. He was dancing with a tripler because her father was victorious. Amen. But now, in the face of Jephthah, all his victory will turn out to be the loss of his daughter from his hand. So most likely when it comes to Jephthah's, daughter, Jephthah's vow, it talks about his foolishness. The foolish vow. But at this time, we will talk about the daughter. Amen. So why will the Lord give me this message? When Sister Minette told me already, it was almost two months ago, I was praying, Lord, what's the message? He did not give me on that night. But when, the moment when I get up in the, in the next morning, when I wake up, immediately I speak from my mouth, the doctor of Jephthah. I said, Lord, ano ang alam ko sa anak ni Jephthah? Ang alam ko lang yung tatay na niya, yung pangako, nagtatay, panata, nagtatay niya. Ano ang sasabihin ko sa anak ni Jephthah? I tried to ignore that message for almost one month. Almost two months, I mean. I try to ignore it. I have another message that I give a title. Plug in, turn on. I already made that. But last Saturday, when I started to finalize everything that I have from that message, God took it away. She brought me back to the doctor. He brought me back to the doctor of Jack. Then I said, Lord, what will I say? I went to the old church. 
God is looking for the living sacrifice. The holy sacrifice. God is looking for this kind of sacrifice. The chosen. The pure. Without blemish. Now the fate of the life of Jephthah's daughter. When Jephthah uh, went home and he was compounded and even blamed his daughter. Nashaksha, hindi niya matanggap. At ang blinay pa niya ay ang kanyang anak. Kaya ang sabi niya dito sa 35, and it come to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. And thou art one of them that troubled me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. And this is the most difficult thing. I cannot go back. Whether he like it or not, he has to give his daughter. And there was a request. We can see the attitude of her, his daughter in verse 36. That's what we read. And he said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to which hath proceeded out of your mouth. She even encouraged her father, you have to do what you have said to God. And then he, she said, that For as much as the Lord had taken vengeance for thee, of thine enemies, even though the children of Ammon, he gave you the victory. He gave what you asked. Now do unto me what you have told God. Amen. But she got one request. Her request was in verse 37. And he said unto her father, let this thing be done for me. Can you feel that? Amen. Let this thing be done for me. I do believe that at this time he, she was thinking of God. Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellow. That's the only request. She said to her and her, her friends, we'll go out and down the mountain to wait for two months because she will die a virgin. She will not be given to marriage. She has no opportunity to be given to marriage. No opportunity to have a child. The Bible did not say about what kind of friends she went with. It did not say what kind of friends. But one thing I know, but her attitude to work on, it shows that no one can define her purity, which the Lord required for burnt offering. Nothing can define herself worthy to be a burnt offering before God, a pure. What kind of friends do you have? Singles. Perhaps one of her friends said, Oh, perhaps you can have a man here just to have a man for at least two months with you. But no. They might try to recure her or encourage her to do something uh, to make her life at least happy in them. Diba sa atin din? Marami ang, ah, lagpas ka na sa kalendaryo. Magtama na lang yan ano. Dalawang buwan na lang, lagpas ka na sa kalendaryo. Ang sabi nga, diba, mayroon namang, alam yung isang dimension. Para mahuhuli ka na sa biyari. Maraming friend na gano'n, diba? Ilang taong ka na, sayang na.
the daughter of Jephthah, whatever kind of friend, no one can defy the will of God in her life. What happened? After two months, she went back. She was allowed for two months. You know why? In fairness, God will not force a burnt offering for himself. She has to give herself willingly. That's why when he went back, that's her victory. She did not have a chance to have a husband. She did not have a chance to have a child. But one thing for sure, she belongs to God. Don't do it in your 
own way. Walk uprightly and make your request made known to God. And He will grant the desire of your heart. For He will not withhold good things to them that want to live uprightly. Maliwala po ang usapan. Yes, amen. Marami sa atin dito nang scroll dito, scroll the wall, hanap dito, hanap dyan. Kung gusto mong maghanap, maghanap ka sa Panginoon. I am not telling you not to get married. But, do it in God's way. Sister Marlene, dahil marami akong partner dito na preacher. I have interviewed some ladies here personally. Ladies, yung kaparehas kong dalaga ba? question to their messenger account and the question was being single and you will be given last two months in your life <laughs> where will you spend that two months and how One sister, answer me. Ang bilis niyang sumagot. Igugol ko na lang sa Panginoon. Sabi ko, igugol mo? Ang inisip ko, maghanap siya sa Google. Igugol mo? Tapos yung in-explain na niya na lahat na lang nagagawin ko para sa Panginoon. Oh, ang ibig, ah, you mean, you are going to spend it all to God? Yes, oh, igugol pala, hindi gugol. Very good. To be used and help in the ministry in the church. V 
visiting brethren and relatives, helping the needy, ask forgiveness to those I hurt and offended, leave a good memory and good relationship to brethren and family, remind and warn the backsliding family and those who are not yet baptized. I am not concerned for having husband next. But God knows 
Tumatawa ang mga mother. For us, single. Kagaya na sinabi ko kanina, being a single is a gift. A blessed gift from God. Because there will be no lots of hindrances to our will for the glory of God. God is God does not show partiality to the merit. Nor there is an evidence that God favor the merit over the single. God is not a respecter of person. We have to accept the will of God in our life. When in fact, if I will turn the question to the merit, I am sure their, their answer to me, not yet, Sister Claire, I have time. Wag naman, Sister Claire, may anak ako, no? That's the answer. That's for sure. Mother, yes or no? Yes. Ang unang isipin nyo, anak nyo, hindi yung uuwi ka na sa Panginoon. Anak mo muna, bago ka umuwi. Yes. Did you see the difference? Yes, right. Of being a single and a mother. But whatever status we are today, do not forget that God must be the priority. Yeah. Now to the life of Gepta's daughter. I'm about to finish. Just, just like what I have said, she did not have a chance to have a husband. She did not have a chance to have a child. Because prior to the last verses for her life, it says there that she knew no man. And to all the ladies that I have questioned and answered me, thank you. We have a lot of plan in our life. This is for everybody now. Marami tayong plano sa buhay. Marami tayong balat na gawin. But where is God? Ang kagaya ng sinabi